Hey everyone, this is Lomi, and today I'm doing a face-up on a raccoon doll Jean. This company has some absolutely beautiful dolls, and it's awesome to get to work on one. I started the face-up process by sealing three times with Mr. Super Clear, then checking the head for dust. Any dust gets removed from the sealant with the tip of a sewing pin. The rest of the face-up will be done with airbrushed sealant because it's been cold and wet here, and airbrushing is really my only option if I want to get this done this month. I've got my 3D printer running in the background, so I'm sorry if you hear any beeps or whirring. As usual, I begin with brushwork using gouache paint. I asked for suggestions on things to talk about during my face-up work this month, and one question I got was about making fine lines with brushes. And that's a really common question, so I'm going to focus on that subject this time, and all about airbrush sealant next time so I give myself plenty of time to talk. So, getting the really tiny lines we see for eyelashes and eyebrows on dolls was my biggest question when I got started with face-ups, and honestly, there was a lot less information about it then. It was not very helpful, because most of the time when you asked for tips, you'd get responses like, thin your paint, and use a smaller brush, without really going into detail. So, really fine lines are really a combination of the brushes you use and how thin your paint is as well as what you're thinning it with. For me, there were a few things that were complete game changers, and that was a few particular brushes and learning to thin my paint with Flow-Aid instead of medium or water. Water will work in a pinch, but the surface tension of water alone makes really fine lines break up, which can give you a gritty or grainy texture, whereas thinning the paint with medium is basically just adding more clear binder for the pigment to float in, so it doesn't really make it thinner so much as more transparent. Flow-Aid is mixed with water, so you get the thinning properties of water, but without the surface tension issues. When thinning your paint, you want it to have a sort of ink-like consistency. There are some paints that have this straight out of the bottle, such as Golden High Flow Acrylics, and gouache and watercolor obviously have that really liquid flow with just a couple drops of Flow-Aid, because they're mostly liquid. If you want more information on thinning paints though, I did a video about thinning acrylics a long time ago, and I'll put a link to it in this video's description. The second big game changer for me was learning that when it comes to picking a brush for line work, the brush being small is less important than the bristles being long. Longer bristles on the brush do a lot for you. For one, it means they'll taper to a finer point. They'll also hold more paint, which means you won't have to dip the brushes frequently, and you'll get more long, smooth lines if you're not constantly having to stop to dip the brush again. And probably most important for me, the longer the bristles are, the more the brush will absorb tremors or shakiness from your hands. A short brush will show every shift, but long bristles give you a lot more room to play, so you'll get much smoother and more sweeping lines. The worst brushes you can use are the ones that are tiny but also really short. You might look at them and assume they'll give you a lot of control, but unless you've got nerves of steel and a perfectly steady hand, you'll be better off with long bristles. Some of my favorite brushes are the Silver Camlin Pro that was given to me by a friend, which I do use for the eyeliner in this video, and the pink Winstonia Berry Wine Nail Art brush I use for most of the brushwork on this face-up. I alternate between those two brushes in a lot of my face-ups these days because they're the best ones I have. I previously used a low Cornell script liner that I really enjoyed and I had great results with it. The nice thing about that one is you can get it at a lot of big box hobby and craft stores so you can pick one up in person. But the Berry Wine brushes are just a little bit finer at the tip, so I find the Low Cornell one has mostly been retired from face-up use to regular painting use because I really like doing Bob Ross style landscapes with acrylics, and it's nice to have good brushes for those too. Since the bristles on the Berry Wine brushes are longer than the ones on the Camlin Pro brushes, I find myself defaulting to those on the days where my hands are more shaky. And then I reserve the Camlin Pro for places that need to be really small but also precise, like the edges of the upper eyelid on this doll for the eyeliner. The slightly larger brush I use for the liner on the inside of the eyelid is a Princeton watercolor liner, which is a bit bigger but it has really stiff and springy bristles, so it works really well for coating that space evenly. 
Using just the very tip of the bristles will give you the finest lines, but that's really a matter of practice. That's also something you can practice on paper though, it doesn't have to be a doll head. Eventually you'll get a good feel for each of the brushes in your collection, and they do all feel a little bit different, so it's good to do a little warm up on paper before you start, just to be sure your paint consistency is right, and that you've adjusted to the length and springiness of the bristles on the brush you're using at any given time. Some people have great luck using watercolor pencils for their super fine lines, but that's honestly always been a struggle for me. Not because of the pencils themselves, but because I've never been able to find a sharpener that gives me the super fine point that other people seem to be able to get. Even when I buy expensive sharpeners, they always seem to leave a blunt spot at the very end, so my pencils aren't tapered like what I see others achieve. I'm sure I'll find a good sharpener that works for that someday, but it hasn't happened yet. I have more I could say about watercolor pencils for line work, but I'll save that for another video because I have a lot of different brands and types of watercolor pencil in my studio, and it probably deserves to have its own solo focus where I talk about the advantages and unique challenges that medium brings. For me, I've always had the best luck with using a brush for my line work, so I think at this point in my work as a face-up artist, I just need more practice, and also to branch out and experiment with styles, because even all this time later, I still feel like I don't have a particular identifiable look to my face-ups that's uniquely my work. Everything I do is a little bit different, and always not quite what I envision, even if it goes well and I'm happy with it in the end. But I think part of that is not being entirely sure what direction I want to grow in, so picking that direction and practicing that might be a good experiment for this year. Especially since I have a lot of dolls that I need to paint in the coming months. Honestly, between the visitors, my own unfinished dolls, all of the heads that I cast for Rune, and the incoming dolls that I told myself I wouldn't buy this year but then bought anyway because they were too good to pass up, I could probably do a second month of nothing but face-up videos. But that would also get a little bit boring, I think, so I'm going to try to have some other projects in there in the middle too. But yeah, I think that covers just about everything when it comes to getting the teeny tiny lines, but if you have any specific questions, you can drop them in a comment below, and I'll do my best to address them at some point in the future. For now, this pretty lady is done and ready to go home, so that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Bye.